Hello everyone. So in today's episode, we spend some time on Mount Fuji with some ice caves, two of them, and we're going to make our way to Lake Suwa. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hello and welcome. This is Andy, I'm Serena, and together we're Right Foot Travel. Join us in our epic open-ended honeymoon traveling around the world. So we finally agreed to stay in a location for a couple of days, which is pretty epic. But uh, the reason why we stay, chose to stay here for a couple of days is because of that. <sighs> Isn't that amazing? The view is just incredible. Oh, there's a little swan. Yeah, it's just absolutely incredible. Um, it's quite funny. We slept here last night and there's so many people that come here with their cars or their motorbikes and they come take little poses um, like that over there uh, with Mount Fuji in the background. And look, I'm not gonna lie, I would too. And we have been, it's so cool. But uh, there's also a, like a huge um, music festival or some sort of schoolies that's going on. So there was like loud music all night. And another really scary thing that I've been personally freaking out about is that at night time, or just as the sun goes down, you're hearing rumbling, like deep booms and then some rumbling. I don't know if it's Mount Fuji or if it's the other volcano that's near here, uh, Mount uh, Hakone, I think it is. Hakone? Oh, I can't remember. Um, there's a mountain there or a, a, a volcano there that also has been making some really interesting noises at night time and it's freaking me out. People will be like, why are you freaking out over that? Well, I'm not used to that type of noise and I'm petrified over this old school movie about volcanoes erupting and I'll find out what the name is and I'll put it, pin it down below and see if you tell me if you've also watched that movie. Um, but yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous. So not much is gonna be happening over the next couple of days. We're just no, gonna be just hanging relax. out here. We'll go for a wonder as we normally do and uh, try and find so some food. Find. We're both pretty hungry right now. We never really eat breakfast in the morning. It's normally at about 10.30 or 12 that we decide we're oh yeah, gonna go get some food. Yeah, it's um, like 11 now. And it's like, yeah, 11 o'clock now. So now we're just gonna head in a general direction to see what we find. We couldn't really find any restaurants that were open other than a burger joint, which was nice. Don't get me wrong and I'll post a photo of it, but it was, a bit overpriced. It cost us basically 25 Australian dollars, which was about 24,000 yen, which was quite a lot considering what you got. I wouldn't even normally spend that back home. So, but we were hungry and it's either that or going to a 7-Eleven. This character right here <laughs> didn't want me to say anything, but the realities, okay? <laughs> this entire day, we basically spent inside the car because he's it is, yes, not only is he beautiful, but it has been so windy. Like, 
the car shakes when the when the wind's blowing. It's just it's intense. Got a bit of work done. Andy uh, actually finished the first YouTube video today, so that'll be fun. Um, and I managed to do a lot of hand sewing in sewing up some little like curtain ties here to keep the curtains back, and then fixing up our um, fly screen. But we just got a weather warning to say that there's going to be some severe thunderstorms tomorrow. So we're just like, nah, fuck it. We're just going to go to a hotel and actually try to enjoy our time here. Um, we are enjoying our time here. But the thing is, when it's just weather like this, it's just, what are you doing? So we've just checked out of our hotel that we've stayed at for two nights because of the severe weather warning conditions. And finally... We have a bit of sunshine and Mount Fuji's out again. Yay! So we're moving on. We're going to go check out an ice cave um, in the in the mountain range, and then stop in uh, a big town and try and find me a switch case because I purchased a switch because I love gaming, and um, do supermarket shop again because we finished up all our food, and uh, find another place to camp that Andy found, which is the scenic. What was it again? That's where it's on a thousand yen note. That's right, the thousand yen note. ご確認ください。<笑> Oh. <laughs> wow, it does get really toy, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jeez. Don't This is the <laughs> oh wow. So back in the days, we used to harvest the ice from the lakes and push them down the scales to keep them cold in it or store them during the wind or during the summer. That's kind of how it looks like. The ice wall reframe here is a natural refrigerator was made by cutting out and stacking natural ice, a method which was used in times before modern electricity. And how cold it is down here as well. This contributed to the deconstruction and infestation. Wow. That's 
that's pretty cool. The only place where the moss grows is where the light is. Interesting. Um, this only cost us six Australian dollars, 600 yen, um, to come see these underground caves, which were really cool. First one was all right, but this, the second one, the wind tunnel, is uh, much better. Okay, so we tried to go to the uh, campsite that was along the like beach, or that was a river, or a lake, sorry, um, that had a really beautiful view of Mount Fuji. But as we got there, um, it was super busy. So the guy did let us give us a ticket and everything. Uh, he, the guy did give us a ticket, but when we drove down there, it was packed full. So we weren't actually able to find anywhere to stay. So we ended up getting a refund and then drove around, tried to find another spot. Couldn't really find anything. So we came back to the town and we went to a parking lot, but then we happened to notice that there were some van lifers uh, in a park. So we had a look and it was a campsite, which didn't come up on Google Maps. Um, and uh, yeah, so we ended up, we're gonna stay here for three nights because it's absolutely beautiful. And we just got some things that we want to get done on the car and kind of just relax a little bit. And it is just, the weather finally is good. So yeah. This is our campsite that we're staying at for the next couple of nights. It's really cool, Harvey. Gonna light up a fire tonight in a little area. We'll purchase some firewood and uh, trying to dry town to fairy lights and yeah, it's actually stunning here. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, I'm not dead. Oh, been in fucking 10 hours. Ah, Thanks to my 100 yen metal saw and my 100 yen diamond file. Took me only fucking 10 hours to cut this six centimeter off this table leg. And if you're asking Andy, why would you do this? Let me show you. Here's a little table. Let me do the bed, which goes along here. So if we're moving this whole thing, all I have to do is this way. Ta da! One step less to do. It shouldn't take too long. Yeah. Pile it up here. Holy shit. I think I just broke it. Yeah, I did. I just broke it. That wouldn't be good, would it? No, you did not break it. No, I broke this. Oh. Oh, good, hmm? oh. So before we're leaving the campsite, we are filling up with water. So through here, we wash oh, through a filter yeah. into our tank. So Andy has a couple of different adapters that he made before we left Australia so that we can try and um, connect to multiple different sources of water. And thankfully this is the place that we stayed at for the last two, three days. Three nights. Yeah, three nights. Don't know if we've already said that, but yeah. And the lovely chaps over there let us um, fill up our tank, which is cool. Saves us from having to do it elsewhere. <laughs> that music playing but we thought it was some like live performance or spiritual thing that they were doing and I was just thinking the entire time far out they must be so sore about now that I realized they're just playing on a speaker <laughs>
frame and shot and let it all out. <laughs> Trey, Trey. 